So this is the review of our brand new 2019 2280 BH ESP. It's a Rockwood camper, Forest River, and it's a fantastic camper. However, when I was doing my research online, I realized that there weren't a lot of YouTube true reviews from owners, but mostly salespeople walking through campers and talking about features. So my intent wasn't so much to create another video like that, but instead, more from a true ownership experience. What's it like to buy a new camper and all the things that kind of happen and go with that. So I hope you enjoy this video. It's a little longer than I wanted it to be, but I hope that it's actually very helpful to someone looking to buy a new camper or a new pop-up camper. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, leave me a comment, uh, subscribe. Uh, I hope to have some more uh, pop-up camper adventure uh, videos coming. Camping! Camping! Yay, we're going camping to Glen, New Hampshire, Glen Ellis Family Campground. And this is our first true camping event. We have bicycles in tow. That is a factory roof rack on the 2280BH ESP and it apparently can hold 150 pounds and they recommend no more than four bicycles. We have three bicycles on it. So I pray that it works well. Anyways, we're finally getting to go camping. We've owned the camper for a month and a half? Two. Two months, and this is our first camp outing. Anyway, it's another story. So uh, we pray uh, for safe travels, and we'll be there soon. Hey, we're here! <laughs> Bye, campground. Thanks, Bye. Ellis Campground. Bye, Lazy River. Bye, Lazy River. Bye. Did you have fun? Yay! Bye, Crazy Lazy River. <laughs> so this is a 2280 BH ESP. We just took it on a little vacation. I can definitely say hookup, um, setup, even drop off uh, is quicker than our old one. I think everything just works better. Design, maybe because it's new. Nice to have clean chains, and up she goes. Now for the van, I had to buy this six and a half inch lift just to get us close to level, and it is very close to level. So I put some airlift springs, not springs, airlift bags, in the coil springs of the van. That helped level it too. As you can see, it's got a lot of utility. Uh, this giant cage on the front is awesome. We have really grown to like it a lot. Uh, we pile our stuff inside. We try to keep it as light as possible. Bulky stuff, but not heavy stuff on the front to avoid too much nose weight. But look, it's it's graded down here. So even if it's nasty, dirty, you can even spray it off. Water just runs through. There's a bike lock on the front. It just loops around. You can lock your bikes up, which is a nice feature. We haven't used it yet. Uh, the campgrounds we stay at, uh, we haven't felt compelled to lock anything up. Um, it came with the roof bars, 150 pound max weight uh, load rating, and they, they recommend no more than four bikes on the roof. These bike racks are the most stable things. The bikes didn't wiggle or move, and they're about 30 bucks each. Forest River sells this same exact bike rack. Uh, I think they charge 80 bucks, but on Amazon, it's 30, 32 bucks. So check it out. You'll see it's the same uh, bike rack, and the reason I know is because they gave me two of these Forest River bike racks and I opened them up. They were exactly the same in every dimension, every color, every shape. It does have the winch, the power winch for lifting, which I like. However, I think I would prefer manual because the power winch is so loud. Crack, see it? 
So I got some stories to tell. I think that does it. So our old camper bit the dust and it required a complete roof rebuild. We bought or decided to go new, to look at new. And we thought if we got new, we wouldn't have any problems. We have been through a serious learning curve. Don't get me wrong, there are some seriously nice features on this camper, uh, which is why we ended up with this one, sort of. Um, very desirable, perfect for our family. The interior has, first and foremost, enough sleeping space for a family of five. It actually says it'll sleep up to eight. I'd say six comfortably. It's queen, king, and two uh, side beds, if you will. So two, four, six. And if you're really close, you could probably fit two people in each of those side beds, but I don't think that's a good idea. They're, they're a little too small for that. After my wife worked so hard to do the interior design, uh, the cloth, the material, the cabinets, on our old camper, our 1997 StarCraft, uh, she made it look really modern, really cool. But every camper I showed her, had that classic 1970s interior. You know, I'm talking about the wood veneer, the classic medium brown wood veneer, and the patterned uh, cloth covers. She didn't want that. She wanted, she wanted white interior. So we found this one. It has a modern interior, and it looks fantastic. This is amazing. It's kind of like having a truck bed smaller but like having a truck bed you just throw stuff in it i even bought a big sealed box it's weatherproof um and uh all the dirty stuff cords cables tools garden hose all the dirty stuff goes in here this camper and all of the ones that forest river builds like this come with an electric uh winch that lifts the roof and lowers the roof. It's exceedingly loud. You see this bright green line? When this is taut, you're done. So we keep the bed bars right here. The ones with the white tips go on the front. That's a king size bed. As soon as I pull the bed out, there's these pins. Lock them in place. If you don't, and you put the roof bar in above the bed, it pulls the bed back. See that? Locks the bed in place. Never seen those before. Let's do the back. This is the queen. Now when we first got it, these bars have an adjustable level here at the bottom of the bumper. Up higher adds obviously more uh, rise. I put it in the bottom one and the beds were kind of creaky and loose and they didn't align with this very well when the bar came out. So I know I found it works best right here in the second slot. You may notice this thing is way off the ground on the old one. On my 97 StarCraft, I couldn't crawl underneath it very easily. It was barely any clearance. I can go under this one with ease without jacking it up. I actually had to buy a 16 inch lift uh, bottle jack. So if I ever need to lift it up, I've got my bottle jack. Something you'll need if you get a flat tire. So what I realized is this is no different, really, than pretty much every pop-up. I think I've ever seen. It's a little subtle differences, but for the most part, it's the same. We even saw a picture of a really old pop-up. Had the exact same floor plan as this one. So there's only so many things you can do. What we were hoping we were buying into is no maintenance. But I've realized a few things. The wisdom on the forums from experienced RVers 
has been that these things are put together sloppy fast. All of them, all RVs, $100,000 ones, $10,000 ones. If it's brand new, you better go through it. So that's what I've been doing since we got it. So if you buy a used one, you may have a better experience as long as it was well maintained because the owner most likely has had to go through all these repairs and you're basically repairing what was defective by the rapid uh, assembly. And sometimes it's not assembly, but for example, on our second day, the faucet failed. It's made of plastic, cheap piece of junk, no serviceable parts inside. I just went to Home Depot and bought a new one made of metal, brass, low profile, and installed it. And it works great and it feels great. So when you lift that sink device, the sink in the oven up and you set it down, there are two safety switches underneath. One is electric, one is gas. When you lift and put this down, it shuts off the electric, it shuts off the gas. When you put it back up, it turns them on. Even though I was plugged in, no electricity was flowing, it is now, and I can turn on the lights. Stabilizers are a lot nicer than an old one, and I know they can be upgraded, and I know you can get a, a, a drill on here. I just haven't yet. I don't mind the exercise. I've since cleaned it up, but the entire underside was covered in uh, uh, wintry salt. It had stripped the paint off the front facing area where the splash hit. So I used a wire wheel sanded everything and painted everything uh, hopefully just to seal it up so it would last and then i noticed it was dog legging or, or dog tracking i could see the whole side uh, of <laughs> the camper in the rear view mirror pulled into a grocery store uh, went straight for a little while until i was just tracking as straight as could be into two parking lanes and now i had lines to look at it and sure enough the whole camper was sideways i was towing it sideways a little bit of aggressive wear on the tread pattern on one side and on the other side of the outside of the tire on the other side so I knew it was towing sideways basically brought it back to them they had it for a couple of weeks they brought it to a trailer in a coil spring or a spring shop and they said the axle was bent and they had to uh, they, they basically rebend the axle to align it once they did that it tows perfectly straight now so while I was under this thing painting wires were hanging all over the place in fact one of them was rubbing it was the uh, brake line, the electric brakes, rubbing right on the tire. So I went through the whole thing with zip ties and I bought wire loom, you know, that hard plastic uh, flexible coating or covering. And I went through and I looped uh, all the wires together and um, put some uh, wire looms into the floorboards, just screwed them into the floor like the others. I had wires resting on metal frame edges. So all of that stuff's been covered, tucked, and protected. So the trailer shop guy who did the alignment on this, he tells me, you need to start driving more careful, you bent your axles, blah, blah, blah. I got to talk to him about the repair. And I said, you understand it's a brand new camper. It came that way. So I said, you see underneath how it's all kind of weathered looking? He said, yeah, <laughs> it came that way. And he said, oh, there's a fairgrounds show every winter and these guys take a few of their trailers there he said i guarantee you that this was one of the campers they brought to the fairgrounds in the middle of winter so they would have taken it down the highway or down the road and it was covered in salt and i do remember seeing it on the lot the body was covered in salt i didn't give it much thought then but once i saw all the rust it made sense so i've done a good job i think cleaning it up and fixing it there was one other thing this door was completely bent. These hinges were so bent, I couldn't barely get it on there without a lot of uh, strength. This hole was so completely stripped out, uh, even a larger screw wouldn't fit in um, without interference. So I ended up finding a really large, I cleaned it all up. I had to bend all of these things straight again and buy new screws. These are stainless and retap with a larger screw. And then also this one was stripped out so bad I used a large pop rivet, but I got it perfectly straight. The door closes great now, and it comes off without any effort. And then for temporary storage when you're camping, it goes right here under the bed. There's two hinge recipients here, and then this little loop 
just goes around the door knob and it stays there. I think that's how it got damaged. Somebody tried to slam this bed shut and damage this because they didn't know what was holding it up. I've done it a couple of times where I forget this is here. So uh, I go real slow anyway. So it just bumps, it stops, and then I remember the door's here. Uh, but again, it wasn't without some challenges. Uh, the alignment, the salty, dirty, rusty stuff underneath, um, the crack in the roof is new. That actually happened after the uh, trailer and coil shop had it for the alignment. Uh, there's some scuffing right by where the crack is. So either something got set on top of the roof or somebody put their weight on it. Uh, I don't know. Uh, either way, it's cracked. And I, I cocked it shut. Because it's so high off the ground, it's sold as a extreme sports off-road model. And it, it makes sense. I mean, these giant tires, 15-inch rims, truck light truck tires on it, it tows beautifully. I'm amazed how well and stable this thing tows. But it also puts it way up in the air. Like I said, I had to get a tall bottle jack just so I could lift it up. You can't reach the bottom of the frame with a regular jack. But it also means when all this is up in the air, I can't even reach the awning. I can't unzip that from the ground. I have to get a step ladder. I've actually bought a little two step ladder. And then also even just doing things like this, Velcroing this. My wife is five foot tall without me. She'd, no, she'd use a ladder. But I can reach that, but it actually takes effort. So you can see how high everything is. Uh, and we didn't take that into consideration when we got it. Putting the awning up and down has become a bigger task than it used to be. So I gotta show you this feature. Our old camper didn't have this. It's kind of a double wall, double line, but not really. This is more of a flap. This is sewn in. But this comes down. And goes underneath and basically Velcros here. And then this comes down over top of that. So the weather and the bug layer is fantastic. I mean, it's basically sealed underneath. It's great. There's a snap and Velcro. This is a pretty nice 900 CFM fan. Uh, it does a pretty good job. It's a little loud, but that's okay. Helps with sleeping, right? No air conditioning. We live in Vermont. If we ever leave here and head south, we will need AC. Maybe a portable AC would be a good solution. This is the battery box. It has one battery inside. It's got room for two, but there's one inside right now. When I first got this thing, this was spaghetti. Black, red wires everywhere. I had to clean this up loom everything, tighten everything up, and rewire the battery box. And I prefer things to be organized. Okay, it's a different day. I got some time to shoot some more video. I want to go through the features on the 2280BH ESP. One external speaker, propane for the gas grill that comes with it, power. This is a nice feature. It allows you to quickly Spray off whatever you need to spray off. Refrigerator access. Shower. Shower. Of all the things, let me insert a clip from our camping trip. <laughs> That's great. Thanks. That thing's handy though. Yeah, I agree. That, I like. Of all the features on the new camper, this is by far my favorite. To be able to take a shower on your campsite when you want at any time is so awesome. I don't mind camp showers, but I'd rather not. This is pretty nice. And we bought a cheap little pop-up tent to shower in and it has little drain holes in the bottom. It works great. AC prep. So if this had air conditioning on the roof, which it doesn't, all the wiring and the 
ports necessary to put it in are here. They're already installed. Your portable uh, fresh water tank power. And this is coaxial cable for TV. Up here, we've already talked about the roof rack, but right in the middle of the roof rack is uh, connections for a solar panel. So you can charge your battery solarly, if that's a word. Diamond plate, and here. The diamond plate on the side has more of an aesthetic feel to it. It doesn't really serve any function. But the diamond plate on the front has a function because that's where you load everything and it's kind of an impact area. Now, my only concern is getting all scratched up and looking terrible. And this is the Dometic awning. Not nearly as nice, believe it or not. It's brand new, but it's not nearly as nice as the one that came on the 1997 StarCraft we had. That one was beefier, thicker, heavier. The poles were stronger. This thing is light. And I mean thin, light, easy to break. When we're camping, I strap it down with ropes and pound stakes into the ground just to keep it on the ground because any wind will pick it up and slap it against the camper. And then if there's any threat whatsoever of any kind of high winds coming or a rainstorm, I fold it up and put it away. But it is super cheap. But it's functional and it's light. USB ports for charging. The water pump. This is a uh, CO2 detector. This is for a 12 volt inverter speaker. Here's the fridge, propane furnace, storage, storage, more storage. All of the cabinets have a little detent that hold them in place when they're closed. Behind here is the hot water heater. And this is the power switch for the hot water heater. Outlets everywhere. Another speaker. Outlet. Optionally for a hundred bucks, you can get a hanging shelf. We're just gonna make one. This is the sink. This is the faucet I replaced. It's actual brass uh, and it's low profile. It doesn't hit or make contact. This is the oven. This is the table extension. Little hooks underneath. Uh, it extends a usable space to five, maybe even six people if I scoot over. This is the power uh, station. There's storage underneath the chairs. On this side, however, this is power and there's also an inline water filter, a pretty big one, and they give you a free one plus the tool to remove it. And this is the king size bed with privacy curtains as well. And then I tell you, this has really come in handy. I wasn't sure how I would utilize that, but when I'm sleeping at night, I just toss my phone up there. Um, to get hot, I can throw my sweatpants up there. It's pretty convenient. Also, the unit came with two of these fans and they plug into the roof here. It's actually a fan and a light. And these aren't new. I've seen these on other uh, older campers. Both beds actually come with heating pads underneath, very warm, super cozy. The mattresses are a uh, very soft um, material and uh, uh, very comfortable. Not as comfortable as obviously as a full-size mattress, but more comfortable than the base mattress in some pop-ups. My oldest son sleeps right here. He doesn't have a heating pad, so my wife went and bought a nice heating pad. As you can see it has the outlet. A nice heating pad, and it goes on his bed, it holds everything together, and then his sheets go on top of that. Woo! It's 88 degrees today. Did I mention there's no air conditioning in this unit? Smoke detector, LED lights. There is a radio, and the radio has uh, USB ports. It also has Bluetooth. And then there's also, over here, an LED porch light and Wi-Fi. It definitely has more modern stuff in it than the 97 StarCraft, but if it didn't have it, I wouldn't have missed it. I wouldn't have noticed. So overall, nice features, nice finish, um, spacious cabin, big beds, lots of sleep space for a pop-up. I'm sold.